Wow, what a clean up clip. Or a chip, I should say. We're off again. It is the 27th of May. It is chilly once again. Well, it's about 60 degrees. And uh, there's a chill in the air from the wind. Yeah, so it's about 18 hours into the day. I can't remember whether I said it or not. It's, so it's May 27th. A delivery came in that allowed me to, will allow me to sort of finish my uh, uh, spring cleaning, putting all my winter clothes away. So that's the reason for leaving a little late. Uh, deliveries are still coming in, even up until six o'clock in the evening. So. I have to allow for that. <laughs> Lionel has shifted his direction once again. He's sort of uh, jumping on his wife's bandwagon about protecting children. This is sort of what sort of is now moving him further into the conservative realm. Uh, is uh, the way people treat the the, the liberals treat, treat treat children. Uh, but part of the problem is is his own statements of moral relativity. And I think that once you adopt the position of more uh, of moral relativity, you cannot state that somebody else's morals, which you consider to be immoral, to be incorrect, because you say, well, it's all more, it's all relative. Right? Some, someone's good is, is someone else is bad. Uh, this is what the, comes out of Voltaire, is this whole concept of hedonism, where as long as it feels good, it's okay, it's good. And that's as far as the morality goes. But the end consequences, the end consequences, If one examines them, it's not the, the hedonism doesn't work. Just like most of uh, Voltaire's theories, this is how we link Voltaire to Lionel LeBron as an intellectual. There really isn't a consideration or an understanding of why something is wrong. And typically, the morality the issue of morality is not an issue of simply well rights and wrongs of heaven and hell. But there's also a consequence, there's a physiological consequence and that it, it, it causes a negative. It's something that is not beneficial to your health or to your being or whatever. There is a negative consequence as a, rel as a result of immorality and there is, there are standards, there are, I mean if you set yourself on fire you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna hurt. For one thing, and for the other is that you could end up uh, well dead. I mean, once you're dead, there's no other there's no <laughs> there's no other way of, of of phrasing it is other than you're dead. I mean, so you had your rights. What do those rights do you if the thing you were right about ends up killing you? You know, so that, that, that's, a, that's a negative concept. Well, I have the right to cross the street whenever I want. It's the cars that have to watch out for me. Well, you have a moment of inattention. A lot of drivers have this. What if in that moment someone doesn't see you crossing and then hits you? Now you're right. You, you have the right of way, but now you're dead. 
did it do you any good? The answer is no. And they'll bring up examples like this as the issues of moral relativity. But the thing is that you see that in this, you see this even in the rule blog. That sometimes, in order not to be dead or get seriously hurt, you have to give up your sense of righteousness. I am right, therefore. And just really back off and say, okay, that's it, that's as far as I go. I don't need to do I mean, it. My backing off. Typically, in terms of its overall cost, let's say time, was 20 to 30 seconds. Not much more than that. And what's 20 to 20 to 30 seconds compared to getting hit or getting into an accident? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much padding or protection I have. If I'm thrown from the scooter by hitting a car or they're hitting me, uh, uh, you know, or I'm getting hit by a bus, <laughs> the padding's not going to help. I mean, that's the simple reality. But what happens is Voltaire and the people like him don't consider reality. They're simply thought ideas, the thought experiments. And they, have, they don't need to have any sense of reality in order to be popular. And so what happens is that you've got Lionel in a position where he is now more he's actually compromised. And the thing is, is that, as what he said before, there's a lot of government involvement in this. And you see the Republicans simply not doing anything. They'll talk about things, but they won't actually do anything. You look at their voting records. What have they done? Nothing. Until people, the government takes some of, the, some of this responsibility, and typically, more often than not, the government is actually involved in these horrors that involve children. You're not going to get a resolution of any form or kind. But yet, this isn't, it, this isn't viewed. Oh, it's the internet. You've got to protect your children. Well, he's, he's jumping onto another fear bandwagon, just like COVID, or should I say C CBD. And of course, he's making his earning line. He goes off and gives these talks and lectures and goes on this road tour and, you know. Again, it's the, it's the whole Voltaire thing. It's, well, it's not... No, well, it's no longer a, 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 a high-place high women's uh, uh, salons. They're, they're parlors, as you have these academic salons. And I said before, academic salons uh, were a feminine thing. They, they were held in, in the salons, the parlors of well-to-do women. Of course, these women would compete with each other for the parties they had. And, of course, they, they would make certain, that certain people of note were not invited, so that would cause an issue. I mean, it, 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 it's, it, it's a typical drama you see that you would see on the on the on this uh, reality show of uh, uh, Real Housewives. Women, there are some well, men too, but, but women particularly will love these dramas. And a lot of people want this drama in their life, and so they go and create. They create these issues. The sense of offense is something that we create. We create the standard of offense. It's something we do to ourselves. I mean, if we take the moment not to be offended, some way to calm ourselves down, or to, to remove ourselves from the offense, things would be much better. We'd have much better lives. And you'd actually, have, you'd actually be able to reduce uh, violence in society. The thing is, we take offense to things because we believe we are great. That's the whole thing about, again, it's our own sense, of, when we're talking about self-righteous, 
We're talking about our own sense of morality, our self-consciousness. And it's, this is, it, it, it's our pride that hurts. It's our, it's our ego that gets to hit. And of course, ego is the Greek word for I. It's the well. things to assess. You know, I'm not, is it, if I weren't watching Lyle LeBron on a regular basis, I wouldn't be able to do this. It's the amount of observation that I put in. Again, it's, it's, it's observation about the amount of time you put into it. Put in the time that you're not going to get any results. It's that simple. Vortex over us, so the temperature has dropped quite a bit. Oh. We can see quite well from what we filmed on the, I think it was Tuesday night. how quickly the weather can change and that well for, for a while you'll have cloud cover that's pretty pretty significant and then after you know not even 15 minutes that cloud cover is completely gone there's a set where we're something we're dealing with uh, uh the night we were filming the thing is we were filming the observation session lasted less than a half hour Should have brought a warmer jacket with me, but it didn't. I will have the rear of the cold while we're on our ride. Hope it's not too distracting. One doesn't need to relax from the various adventures. In research that, that you take. And I did relax tonight uh, with a nice uh, couple episodes of SpongeBob. <laughs> well, ironically enough, there's enough satire within SpongeBob that uh, uh, it puts a different spin on some of the work that's done. Uh, 
was able to get across rather easily. Basically, Ryan LeBron and SpongeBob SquarePants is uh, Squidward. Squidward plays the the intellectual who was never really succeeded, and there's a lot of those. Quite a bit of wind, and it really does make for a chilly ride. <laughs> it is easily stated a vigorous ride. As the body is chilled to the bone, He's certainly awake now. about 20 seconds until the lights change so enough time to get situated in an hour eight seconds uh, here we go uh, Intellectualism is not always as it's cracked up to be. Sometimes living simply is where it's at. So you can have basically it comes boils down to life is what you make it. To, what you make it. If you're determined to be miserable throughout your entire life in terms of not being exalted as the best, as the greatest, if that's your thing. And you're going to be miserable the entire your entire life. However, if you live, you know, with satisfaction with what you've already achieved, then anything else is gravy. miserable and depressed your entire life. Just because someone doesn't think you're the greatest thing in the world. But of course, uh, a person such as that will always find something new where there is an essential threat and he'll take up the cause with all the gust and favor and whatever until he fails again. And then go turn to something else because well there are too many stupid people out there who don't really want to do anything and uh well it's never his own fault it's always people who are stupid too stupid to understand well no that's not necessarily the case it doesn't mean you fail to achieve what you set out to achieve and maybe you just simply approach something in the wrong direction sometimes it's not whether you're right or, or, or whatever, a lot of times it's your approach to the problem can be uh, the problem itself. How you how you deal with things really does matter. But at the same time, is you, you never really know how to deal with things exactly. So there is the whole thing of trial and error. You try one thing. If you fail, you dust yourself off. You try to figure out right where you went wrong. And you try again with a different approach. And there's always these assessments in terms of progress. Even if you fail, you may have some progress where you learn from your failures. 
this is what, in many ways, in terms of fractional understanding, the understanding of calculus, over a series of tries, you can work yourself to a point where the, the, the success from failures comes over the uh, repeated set of failures every time you learn something. You learn something new. how we work, this is how we understand, this is how we learn, and we try to be as we move ahead more understanding. I got a whole section of lights up here. with this black out. Uh, and to move over to the left lane because there's a bus parked in the right lane. So we'll wait for that. And then go from there. Oh. Well, we're 30 seconds to cross now. 30 seconds. My mirror is working well. There was another vehicle parked on the left side, so I had to move around. On the right shoulder. On the right shoulder. It was an electrical truck fixing, I guess, fixing the wires for the power here. Uh, so let's go up. The light's going to turn green out. There's still nobody behind me, so that's pretty good. Thank you. 